What's up, everybody? So, tis the season. Almost. I know we're over a month out of Thanksgiving, but I like turkey so much, I'm going to do one now. I'm going to do one at Thanksgiving. Maybe one before the end of the year. I like turkey. Um, but my preferred method these days is a spatchcock turkey. Um, I know you, some of you have heard of it and seen it and done it. Some of you have never heard of it. Um, it's just a easier, faster way of cooking your turkey. Um, actually shaves off a bunch of cook time um, and just cooks it evenly. Because, um, you know, obviously when, a, when you get a bird, you know, it's pretty much all closed in. Um, and one thing that I try and I stay away from completely is stuffing the bird. Obviously, if you spatchcock it, you're opening it wide open and there's no stuff in it at that point. Um, growing up, um, having the turkey stuffed, what happens is you, you stuff this completely, you're adding to your cook time um, because there's no air flowing through there, no heat from whatever you're cooking on. And then you also got to watch out for uh, when you do that, I mean, you got to make sure that the turkey's done. So the problem is if you're taking that stuffing out and the turkey's not quite done, then somebody's going to start getting sick. So I'd prefer just to stay away from that, cook the stuffing on the side. I do get people like the traditional turkey um, just to cook it like, like it is now, um, which is awesome. But I've definitely uh, steered away from that. I'm okay with the presentation of a spatchcock turkey at the end. It's, you know, wide open. It looks cool. Um, and you know it's done thoroughly and so let's uh, let's get into this so I like to have so when you're spatchcocking a turkey compared to a chicken it's a little bit tougher obviously the bones are thicker so you're gonna need some better shears than you probably would when you're doing your uh, when you're doing your chicken and a sharp knife uh, to have by the side so what I'll do is this is a butterball turkey it's a uh, come all tucked and everything I'm gonna remove that I've already taken out the inside so we're gonna flip here's the breast meat what you want to do is flip it over and we're gonna we're gonna literally just take out this backbone that's how we're gonna do this all right so let me uh, I'm gonna start back here I'm gonna take these awesome shears from Mustermeister and I'm just gonna start cutting see that So far, so good. That one a little easier than I thought. And then you're gonna go right down this other side, right along there, and we'll get rid of this spine here. And this spine, a lot of people use it for uh, for stock. You don't necessarily gotta throw it away. I personally have no use for it. Right, let's get closer. All right, so there's the spine. Let's close these up. Like I said, you can make stock with that. Do whatever you'd like with it. Um, so now, now the other part is opening it up. A chicken, you can normally just flip it over kind of force it and it'll snap the breastbone. The turkey's a little bit tougher because the bone's thicker. So you want to have a sharp knife and score right down the middle. See where the breastbone is? Just to kind of help it. Just see, it's scored extremely easy right there. You're still gonna have to put some pressure on snapping that um, breastbone. But let me, uh, let me grab this. Let me discard this real quick. I don't need this did that so now now you just want to see it just I don't know if you can hear that but it snapped like so it's laying flat I'm gonna definitely open this up here that way we can lay this flat all right boom so there's a spatchcock turkey you can see, so when you season this, everything's wide open. You can season the inside. What I'll still do is trim. I'll trim a lot of this excess off. All the skin, fat here, I'll keep going with that. Um, once I get it cleaned up, I'll season it. 
I'll seize on both sides and basically just get it on. So if you look, um, what I'll do when I'm when this is cooking, I'll temp it um, through the breast. So let me. Uh, so it's either. Let me grab one of these. So if you have a Traeger and you got the Wi-Fi, I'm just going to plug this uh, probe right into the breast um, and then just track it that way through my Wi-Fi. Uh, that way you don't got to keep opening the lid or I got a Thermalworks here or any other one to where you can, you know, just, I always go off of the breast, temp the breast and once the breast is where it's at, you know, I always go about five or 10 degrees underneath the, the finished cooking time and then let it rest and you'll have the, a perfect bird. So also what Traeger has are these turkey pellets. Um, the awesome thing that, that's about with these pellets and a lot of people don't really know, some do, some don't, is when you open the bag, you get a brining kit. This brining kit is unreal. Um, I'm not gonna brine this turkey. Once it comes down to um, Thanksgiving, I'm definitely brining the turkey, so I'm gonna save this for then. But brining your turkey is, I didn't believe in that. I never brined anything until the last couple years. And I brined my uh, turkeys the last couple years. I put so much flavor, so much moisture in the meat. But I personally like turkey just the way it is, so I'm okay with without brining it. I know a lot of people don't even really care for turkey because you know they say it has no flavor, but I personally love turkey. So turkey pellets, if you see them uh, at any of your local dealers, I think Ace Hardware or whatever, they might have these. Um, you pick up a turkey a bag of turkey pellets you're gonna get a branding kit inside the bag right on the top so that's that man i'm gonna get this thing on my timberline and get it fired up and going and have some turkey sandwiches later thank you guys